Restored Church. My name is Mary Pena, and I want to say thank you for joining with us this morning. If this is your first time with us, we would love to connect with you. You can check us out at restorechurch.net and click connect to let us know who you are and how we can better serve you. I believe that God has something specific for each and every one of us this morning. So let's lean in and worship together. Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you wherever you are to stand with us if you can. And let's get ready to worship this morning.
We have some exciting news for you this morning. First off, we can't wait to see all of your smiling faces because next Sunday, February 7th, we are coming back in person for services at both our 9 and 11 a.m. services. Also, our Baptism Sunday has been postponed. Here at Restore Church, we believe baptism is an important part of your walk with God. And if you are ready to take that next step, we are having Baptism Sunday on February 28th. So just go over to RestoreChurch.net under the events tab and sign up there. Ladies, mark your calendars for March 12th and 13th because we are headed to Richmond, Virginia for this year's ROAR conference. We have 15 spots available, so head over to RestoreChurch.net and sign up under the events tab. If you're married, why don't you go ahead and give your spouse a shout out in the comments. Now grab their hand and get ready because we are having a Married People's Night Out or In event. It's Friday, February 12th. You can join us on Zoom or we'll be meeting at the Worship Center from 7 to 8.30. And childcare will be provided by our students. We will be taking donations for childcare to help send our students to camp this summer. Please visit RestoreChurch.net under the events tab to register for the night out or the night in. Well, now it's time for our Difference Maker shout out. This week's Difference Maker is Izzy Cameron. Izzy gives her time and energy in many different capacities, from serving as a member of the executive team to leading our groups throughout the year, discipling others, and as a prayer intercessor throughout the week. Thank you so much for the countless hours you serve, Izzy. You are truly making a difference. Giving is a big part of who we are here at Restore Church. It's through your partnership in giving that gives us the resources to expand and continue working to build the kingdom of God. You can go over to RestoreChurch.net and click on the Give tab to give. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, and we thank you so much for the way that you just continue to bless this church and bless those who give. We love you, and we thank you for the opportunity to give back part of what you have given to us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Here's your story. Let's begin. The water's fine. Come on, dive in. The future's here. It's right before your eyes Step by step you're on your way Welcome to a brighter day Don't you know it feels good to be alive You could be alive know you could. Well, good morning, Restore Church. How are you this morning? So incredible to see our folks here in production, as well as those of you who are joining us online. We are so grateful for you, and we want you to know we've been praying for you. We're excited that you're tuning in right now. Don't scroll on. Don't lose your stream. I want to encourage you. God's got a word for you. He's going to meet you right where you're at, and I believe you're going to be encouraged. And those of you who are watching online that are far from God, I'm telling you there's a pathway for you to be forgiven, set free, made whole. And today, God's going to do something in your life. I want to challenge this church to prepare to move. That's the word of the Lord. I've been praying for all week long. God deposited in my spirit as I began praying for today. I'm excited about today. Now, most of you are watching online right now, and we're excited about next week as we start rolling back in person after several weeks of navigating through some things. And we've updated some of our procedures and looking forward to gathering together again. And we believe that God God is going to do something amazing as we prepare in advance for what's ahead. And I, we, we've been preparing and talking and praying about the Easter season.
season. And I believe that God is just lining things up for continued growth. And uh, continued growth, not cor- just corporately, but in your life. I don't believe you get to be left behind. In fact, we're not leaving anybody behind. We're taking as many people forward with us into thriving, not just surviving in this season. So as, uh, as the military would say, give, a, give a, an announcement. There's, 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 a, there's a warning. There's a, there's a word that comes forth to, uh, to a body, to an assembly, to a military unit that's massed. And this word is prepare to move. And I want to challenge us as a church. I want to speak it prophetically into your life, into your atmosphere, into your world, into your circumstances, into your spirit. Church, prepare to move. I believe God is doing something in this season, and uh, we're excited about it. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about the mission of the church and what's God calling us to and the, and the vision and where we're going. And I want to just begin to deposit some things into your spirit. So right now, we are, we are preparing in our hearts. We're preparing in our spirits. We're praying. We're believing that God's going to do things. And, um, and, and sometimes even practically, we're, we're stepping out in faith in practical ways. The vision that God began to lay on my heart and us as leaders of the church to see where this church is going is this. We exist to connect people to an authentic and life-giving relationship with Jesus. We just don't do church. We have a relationship with Jesus that's real. It ain't fake. It's real, and it's life-giving, meaning you come in dead, you go out living, alive, fully alive, and also sharing life with others. And on top of that, we just don't want you to come in and chill and be comfortable. We want to see you live to your full spiritual potential. That's called being fully devoted followers. That's full maturity in the spirit. And we want to help you journey in your faith so that you're living out the full aspect of what God has for you, your full spiritual potential. And we believe that we're going to see uh, we're, we're going to see that in your life, in your family's life, and in communities and in areas around the world. Part of our mission, though, is to be a life-giving church that restores the relationship of the church to the world. See, Jesus began to restore the relationship of humanity to God. He was that, that bridge. He was that, that offering on our behalf. And, and we, as an aspect of, of who Jesus is, as a representative, as an ambassador to the world, we begin to not be like the world, but show the world there's a better way, and that's through Jesus. And, and we do this by reaching people with the resources and talents that God's entrusted us with as we make fully devoted followers of Christ. As you grow in your maturity, in your maturity, part of the discipleship process is uncovering, developing, and releasing the potential found in you. And we just want things in your life to get gooder and gooder. It's really simple. It ain't that complicated, but it is powerful. If you begin to tap into what God has for you, your life's going to be different. Your life's going to be changed. And so I want to tell you, church, I want to tell you, whoever's watching it right now, prepare to move. And I'm not just talking physically. I'm talking there's something that should be shifting or preparing in your spirit to move. And I want you to be aware of that. I want you to be attentive to that. I want you to be looking for the signs that God is beginning to stir something inside of you, even during these challenging seasons and these challenging times. Now, all of this is set within the framework of this. The two greatest commandments that God said, he put them on the same level. He said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. These aren't two separate concepts, but they're married or joined together. And as we love our neighbor as ourselves, as we love others around us, And we love God. There's a transformation that takes place, not just in my relationship with God, but in my relationship with others around me so that we begin to look more like what God has in store for us. And I want to challenge us as a church to prepare to move. Now, some of us may be finding ourselves into some sticky situations or moments where we're just kind of down in our faith or we're stuck and or maybe we find ourselves out of rhythm from growth of where we were or you may, some of you haven't been in, in a physical church location in almost a year and I want to challenge you right now that God is doing something he's 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 moving he's preparing to begin to to, to do something in the church and I want to begin to give you some key 
keys this morning as you begin to prepare yourselves, things for you to, to be aware of, because I believe God is starting to do something. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4. I've been hanging out in, in the book of Peter for a little bit in my prayer life, and um, this is a great book where the Apostle Peter, now let me give a little disclaimer. While I was preparing for this message, I kept mixing up the name Peter and Paul. That's pretty easy to do just in my casual conversation. So if I accidentally say Paul, please know that I'm referring to the Apostle Peter. It's the same uh, disciple, apostle that Jesus uh, said he's going to build his rock on the church. This Apostle Peter was writing to the church a letter, those that he was discipling, and he was writing to them from a place that he identified as Babylon, what scholars believe was Rome, uh, and he was writing to a church that had been going through some suffering and struggling and challenges and quarantine and isolation and plagues and problems. Sound familiar? And and he was writing out of that 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 prison cell, that confinement to this location. He posted it on Facebook. Facebook, and he says this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. He says, since we are approaching the end of all things. Hey, even then, Peter felt like it was close to the end times. He didn't know how long things would be or what God had in store, but he knew inside his spirit that he had to prepare people for the end of all things. So as he's making this statement, this clearly more applies to us because we're closer to the end than any other generation. So at this point, your ears should be perked up. You should be listening. You should be leaning in. What is, the, what is going on since we are approaching the end of all things? He says this. This is found in the Passion Translation. Be intentional. Purposeful. And self-controlled so that you can be given to prayer. <clears throat> I love this because most of the time you can't accidentally pray. <laughs> some of you think when you said, oh God, you were praying. No, 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 no. You were just taking the Lord's name in vain. There's some intentionality behind your prayer. Some purposefulness in your prayer. Some self-control. No, Jesus, I know you got this. I, I, I know what your word says. I know you got this. Some of you need to get some intentionality behind your prayer life, some intentionality behind your thought life, some intentionality, some purposefulness, some self-control around your spirit so that you are not wandering to and fro, so that you are not beginning to just echo everything else the world has. Continues on. Above all, so... Peter sets a priority of this constantly echo, 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 God's intense love for one another. What is an echo? It is a, a phrase or sound that continually repeats over and over and over and over and over again and eventually dissipates by your hearing but still resounds. It is, it is not a, a different sound. It is the same sound that gets repeated. And the closer you are to God, the more your echo sounds like his. Sometimes I feel like in the church world, We've got some of God's voice and we've got some other spiritualism things that we've kind of let migrate in our thought patterns and our, that God ain't going to give me more than I can handle. Well, no, that's not true. You can't handle it by yourself. If you're trying to, it is more than you can handle. He's not going to give you something that he can't handle for sure because he can. And I want to challenge you as a church that that we've got to begin to get back to the word, to the purity of the gospel, to what it says. And it says to constantly echo what he's saying, God's intense love for one another. For love will be the canopy over a multitude of sins, a covering over a multitude of sins. 
We use this in our household a lot, that love covers those offenses and infractions and things that go on. And family is God's form of government. And the reality of it is, is in family, in our tribe, we promote love above all else. Now, love isn't the kind of love that just lets you be walked on. Love doesn't, doesn't have conflict or is not involved in conflict. Absolutely, love is involved in conflict. Love uh, does speak the truth. Love does believe in wholeness. Love does believe in discipline. Love does believe in correction. In fact, I think the parents that don't discipline their kids don't really love them. Oh, yeah, I, I said that. That's right. That's right. If you don't really discipline your children, you're not really showing them love. And hopefully that convicts some of you because, because the reality of where we are, we need to recognize that God loves us. He, scripture says he disciplines those he loves. And so I want to challenge us as a church that we are echoing what God is echoing. Sometimes... Uh, you can see a couple or uh, 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 friends who've been together for a long period of time, and they say the same things at the same time. They finish each other's sentences. My hope in prayer is that your relationship with God mimics that, that you can finish God's thoughts, that you can finish God's sentences, that you know God, that you have a relationship deep enough with God, that you are echoing what he's saying, that you're not making it up or you're not letting other words start to filter in from outside of his context. We've been given his word, we've been given his spirit, and we need to be a church that echoes what God says, not just echoing what the world says around us. And Peter says to do this above all else, constantly echo God. God's intense love for one another. What does that word mean when he says constantly? That means you could do it not constantly. So that means you've got to be intentional and purposeful to begin to display love for one another. He's talking to a church going under, undergoing persecution and suffering. Now the Greek word or verb echo can mean to maintain, possess, or to keep. It means that you can maintain the status quo over and over and over and over and over and over again. Or it could also mean to be so closely joined to something that you become its echo. In this case, we join ourselves so closely to God's love that we echo his forgiving, fervent love towards one another. Now, this, this is within those who are in the tribe or the body of Christ, those who, are, uh, those who have, have aligned their heart with God, those who are part of the church, those who are saved. But then he also continues on and says this, be compassionate to foreigners without complaining. Here's a scripture verse that says that you can't just have your holy huddle, but you need to be compassionate or be hospitable to those around you because there's a reality as you become hospitable to the foreigners, they will want to make camp with you. They will want to join your community. They will want to see your love and hospitableness and begin to walk out with those things. But if they hear you complaining, do you think you're, they're going to want to join in? No. And what you offer is an authentic and life-giving relationship with Jesus. So who wouldn't want to draw water from that well? I want to challenge us as a church that we just don't get isolated with our one or two or few relationships and get in this holy huddle and not begin to be compassionate on those who really are far away from God and need what you have. And that means like, share, comment, sharing the news feed, inviting people to church, sitting with people, saying hi to people you don't know, beginning to be hospitable to those who are strangers and foreigners and don't complain while you do it. All right. Every believer, this is verse number 10, every believer has received grace gifts. Oh. So this is Peter talking to a church that is trying to just survive, not just thrive. And he begins to lay out this platform saying these things and saying, every believer has a grace gift. Even while you're in isolation or you're in quarantine, you have a grace gift. So use them. Don't let them go dormant. 
Use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of many colored tapestry of God's grace. What is that? God is saying that he knitted the church together, believers together, and you got something, and you got something, and you got something, and you got something to begin to bring, to add in, and not just take away. So much of the American church experience is meant for you to consume rather than for you to contribute. And that is reversed from what I read in scripture and what I see in the first century church. There's an expectation and ownership that we don't just come hungry or empty-handed, but we actually bring the gifts inside of us means no one's without excuse. Because even if you ain't got a dollar, even if you got food, you got a gift inside of you that God wants to, to, to use to encourage others around you and build up the church because God is doing something. And he planned this beautiful uh, organism of the church to begin to thrive in season and out of season, like an oak tree planted by rivers of living water bearing fruit all the time but what we see is a handful of people oftentimes in the American church structure using their gifts in limited fashion do you realize that right now right this very second you watching right online right now can use the gifts that the Holy Spirit has deposited in you right now actively in fact you don't even need to be in this room to be using the gifts some of you got the gift of encouragement some of you got the words of wisdom some of you got prophecy some of you got teaching some of you got uh, um, uh, uh, some of you got words of affirmation. Some of you sitting behind the screen praying in tongues. And as long as you post an interpretation on there, I'm cool with that. But I, I want to encourage you as you begin to pray and prophesy and, de and declare you're encouraging one another, even right online, right now, you are actively using your gifts. It's not a one-way street, you just receiving from me. It's actually us beginning to receive from each other and us learning how to receive from God the Father who gives us every gift good gift who begins to pour out and equip and strengthen the church as we as a church begin to utilize the gifts that God has given us I want to challenge you I want to let you know what a few of those gifts are Romans 12 verse 6 through 8 says that, that some of the gifts are prophecy and serving and teaching and exhortation and giving and leadership and mercy uh, Corinthians also tells us in Corinthians 12 uh, words of wisdom the words of knowledge faith gifts of healing miracles prophecy distinguishing between spirits or uh, uh, tongues interpretation of tongues the these are some of the gifts that the Holy Spirit deposits. And it's not just that some or select few get the gifts. No, no. God begins to pour them out on all. And as you begin to activate, as you begin to, to step into those gifts, man, I'm telling you, things begin to multiply. Things begin to shift. And people that feel like they didn't belong now start to feel like they can contribute or add something to something to, 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 to this. Have you ever been to a church picnic? I, mean, I won't say church picnic. Have you ever been to a picnic? And everybody's expected to contribute or bring something. Perhaps you signed up for the mashed potatoes or someone else signed up for the dessert or somebody else signed up for the, for the drinks. And, and you know those people who just show up every time without anything, without contributing anything. And they, are, they just show up when it's time to eat and don't add anything. Don't clean up. Don't bring any utensils or anything. And pretty soon after a, a, a season of, of routine of regular gathering together, person not bringing it, there needs to be some correction. So I, I'm lovingly telling you, if you've been showing up to church for years and you just have been consuming, it's time to stop. It's time for you to actually start contributing. Well, pastor, how do I start contributing? Well, let me tell you, there's lots of ways for you to serve, for you to get involved, for you to pray. And it doesn't have to just be on Sunday morning. We've got serve teams through the week. We've got small groups through the week. We want to add and multiply our resources. I want to develop a uh, ministry dealing with uh, a addiction and recovery. I want to develop a ministry to single moms. I want to see a ministry developed to meet the needs uh, around our community with child care and after school care. I want to begin to meet the needs as an organization uh, to those who are hungry and need food. I want to begin to be a church that supplies our resources and is generous to our community. I want to begin to see ministries multiplying. I want to begin to see the church rising up in such a way that we can see the transforming of the relationship of the church to the world. I want to begin to see a, a community and community communities surrounding us that are healthy and thriving and spiritually on fire. I want to begin to see people who are rising up living out of the full maturity of their faith. 
I want to see churches and church planters and missionaries raised up. I want to see the, the kingdom come. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to begin to see some amazing things happen. And I'm telling you right now, as the gifts inside of you begin to rise up, uh, the, the, the scripture says that your gifts make room for you. Some of you are wondering around, where's my place at the table? Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Well, let me just tell you, start you activating some of your gifts. Start you stepping into your gifts or your passions. And I believe that your gift will make room for you and God will begin to move on your behalf. It's interesting to me later, we'll read this in just a second, but, uh, but um, uh, P, uh, 1 Peter 4 actually begins to describe the gifts here in this way. Whoever speaks and whoever renders service. That's another translation that I have in front of me. Whoever speaks and whoever renders service. That is a spiritual gift. So some of you think that changing tires isn't a spiritual gift. Some of you think that, that baking cakes aren't spiritual gifts. Some of you think that, that praying for people isn't a spiritual gift. Some of you think that, that ministering to our, our kids isn't a spiritual gift. Well, let me remind you what the word says. Whoever renders service and whoever speaks is speaking or rendering service out of a gift of the Spirit. I want to challenge us, church. We need to prepare to move. So as we continue to read, going back to verse 10, every believer has received the grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of many colored tapestry of God's grace. God's knit us all together with all kinds of gifts and, and ideas and creations and wiring, and it's by his grace that we're knitted together. And verse 11 says, for example, I'm telling you, kind of giving you an example. If you have a speaking gift, speak as though God were speaking his words through you. Be confident. Walk in the power and the anointing of the Spirit, and let the, let the gift begin to flow through you. And continues on. If you have a gift of serving, do it passionately with the strength that God gives you. I love seeing the church rise up in times of need and of crisis. People getting out and serving and holding doors and making food and loving on one another well. Some of you don't realize that a card is a true ministry. I have a friend of mine, she might be tuning in online and started right now. He's sending uh, veterans cards, and it's a ministry. Uh, a get well soon card. You have no idea. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in grief card. Uh, 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 you have no idea the ministry. I, there are cards that I hold on that I put in my drawer because during past appreciation time or sometimes people wrote a note of how, how what an impact I've had on them. And they did, I read them in times where it just ministers to me. You have no idea even just what a thank you note, a card will do, and so a moment. So as a church, I want to begin to remind you what the Spirit says. So some of you feel stuck. Some of you feel like you may not you don't fit in this tribe. Some of you may not understand. But let me give you, break this verse down, these verses down to five quick things that you can do as the end draws close, that you can do to get unstuck, to prepare to move, for you to be ready. Are you, are you ready? I'll give them to you real quick, rapid fire session. Here we go. Number one, be given to prayer. We read that in the first verse. Be given to prayer. If you feel like you're stuck, start praying. If you feel like you haven't heard from God in a while, start praying. Start talking to him. If you feel like you don't know where to go or what to do, start praying. If you don't feel like you know, know the next steps or how to prepare to move, you start praying. So be given to prayer, number one. Number two, be devoted to loving your fellow believers. Some of you feel really far and disconnected. I almost, see, I got a I have this blanket that somebody incredible made me, and uh, I love it. I use it often as a lap blanket. It's knitted together, and they said when they gave it to me that every knit was a prayer for me, and I love it. So, uh, but this is knitted together. It's a bunch of, of, of knitted uh, yarn together, and it forms this beautiful tapestry, this beautiful blanket that is very warm and practical, and, and it would be like if I just stretched it out real far, uh, and these... these um, these these knitted knots together would just begin to spread out real far. And some of you feel like you're so distant from those relationships or people that you were connected to. And I want to challenge you. If you start loving people around you, it'll start pulling you together. It'll start, it'll, it'll be the fixing of the, of the yarn that was pulled apart and separate. So start, be given a prayer, be devoted to loving uh, fellow believers, be compassionate to strangers and foreigners, then use, this, that's number three. Number four, use your spiritual gifts to serve one another. And number five, give God glory in all things. Now, I noticed something very quickly uh, in the, this list of five. 
Perhaps you already picked up on it. There are three things with which you need to be, and they are the first three things, and two things with which you are to do. Both of those two things with which you are to do exist with things that you already have. You already can give God glory. You already can use the spiritual gifts that you have. Some people get this out of balance and they start trying to do three things and only be two things and you're working harder than God wants you to. In fact, James starts talking about, uh, about the issue of having faith and then he comes back and says, "By I'll show you my faith by my works, but he's only referencing the latter two. And so some of you feel like you're outworking God. Well, I did this and I did this and I did this. And God's not stepping up. Well, slow down. <laughs> you haven't done the other three things that require you to be. <laughs> be. Be given to prayer. Be devoted. Be compassionate. Sometimes as a pastor, I minister with people who are doers. They'll get things done. And they want to do a lot for God. And that's commendable. Sometimes the challenge is for us to learn to be at Jesus' feet and be where he is. And be present in those moments and be praying and be devoted and be compassionate. And then also step out and use the gifts and give, doing what he's asked us to do. See, scripture reminds us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, I want them to be encouraged. This is Paul now talking to the church of Colossae. This is you, who the church of Colossae also going through some things. He says, I want them to be encouraged and knitted together by strong ties of love. How do you start moving? You love. How do you prepare to love? You pre how do you prepare to move? You prepare to love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. See, it's interesting to me how Paul also talks about to the church of Ephesians this idea of being knitted or grafted together. And I'm praying in this season where it feels like so, I mean, there's people I have, have called me their pastor in this church, their church, that I haven't seen in almost a year. And I believe that God is going to begin to tie us tighter together, even in this season. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16 says, from whom the whole body is joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped and by each working part properly makes the whole body grow as a body of itself up into love. Let me read it out of another translation. From him the whole body fitted and knitted together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love and by proper working of each individual part. That means you got a part to play. That means you have something to be invested in. I want to challenge you and encourage you in these moments. We're not just pew sitters but we are owners and investors into the kingdom of God. And when we invest in the kingdom of God, God multiplies it. In fact, scripture talks about giving God a loan. When you give to someone in need, you're giving God to loan. And scripture says he repays that back in interest. I want to challenge you. Test him in these moments. Give, begin, to give, begin to give. Watch how faithful God is. Watch how good God is. Let him begin to show himself to you over and over and over and over again. And as I began preparing this message, this, this one verse out of Matthew uh, chapter 16 began to just resonate in my soul as God began to say, prepare to move. Uh, church, I want you to prepare to move. I want you to prepare to be on mission. I want you to prepare to begin to interact with the, with the world, not in the same way the world does, but as a hope and a beacon of light to the world. I want you to begin to, to, to represent me well. I want you to begin to have a, a, an authentic and life-giving relationship with me. I want to remind you what Jesus says to Peter in these moments. Yes, the same Peter that wrote the book that we were talking about. His first name was Simon. He was a son of John. And if Jesus identifies him. He says this, you are blessed. It's the same word he used when he blessed communion. It's the same word that he said you are blessed when the, when the blessings were given out at creation. It's the same word of blessing over and over and over again. And he leaves this profound blessing. Notice, he leaves it to Simon, son of John. When Jesus met him, his name was Simon. He began identifying him by another name, Peter, in, a, in just a moment. And he was 
called Peter the rest, identified as Peter the rest of his life. Simon was his old name, kind of old nature, kind of old identity, old given, uh, given, uh, old given name. And he continues on and says this, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you, you did not learn this from any human being. Now I say that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven Whatever you forbid on the earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on the earth will be permitted in heaven. And it continues on in this blessing. I want to read it out of another translation. Perhaps you've heard it in this way. This is the New King James Version. I remember memorizing this as a kid. And it says this. And I also say to you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that's what I kept that phrase right there. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Kept resonating in my spirit. As church, as we prepare to move, as we prepare to to get on assignment with what God has called us to do, with where God's called us to reach, to bloom where we're planted, as as the, the gates of hell have been trying to come against this church, trying to come against your life, and I'm telling you that the power of God has begun to be poured out in your life in such a way that the, that hell cannot conquer it, cannot overcome you. I don't want to I want you to recognize the power that resides in you. Do you realize it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead? that lives in you. That means you no longer have to stay in your grave. That means you no longer have to be dead in sin. That means you no longer have to remain numb inside and depressed and going through your same cycles over and over and over again because Jesus died, didn't stay stuck in that cycle, came out and is alive and well. And by that same spirit that raised him out of the dead and gave him life again and gave him resurrected life, becomes to give you life. And it's a life-giving power that flows through you. And through an authentic relationship with Jesus, this isn't just some pray your prayer or come to church and check the block. This is something that's actively engaged in your spirit, in your soul, and even in your body that God begins to manifest himself to you in ways that begin to strengthen you and, 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 and will save you. And to listen to this, that if you believe that Jesus died for your sins and, he, and he's resurrected and he's the payment for you and you accept him as Lord of your life, if you acknowledge that in your mind, if you believe that in your heart, you you confess that with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, the scripture says you will be saved and you are promised eternal life. So if you are right now not sure where you would go, if you were to die right this instant, if you are not sure where you would go, I know that you can know right now. Scripture promises us that I can be reassured, I'm reassured where I'm going and you can be reassured and you can have supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from heaven to evade your spirit and I want to pray a prayer with you in just a moment to, to, to lead you so that you can know uh, uh, that, 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 that you're going to go to heaven. And above that, Jesus said, I didn't just come so that you could go to heaven, but I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I've come to give you an, a purpose and a destiny and, and have you fulfill the full spiritual potential inside of you. See, you couldn't fill the full potential spiritual, the full spiritual potential inside of you in your own strength. You can't do You can't even fill your own natural desires that you want to fulfill in your own strength. But by, by the power of God, he can save you and set you free from your sin, shame, and guilt, and he can lead you into life and life everlasting and life eternal. And I believe by it's by his resurrection power that he can set you free and give you a destiny that is greater than you can think or imagine. I believe that as we as a church begin to link arms, as to get knitted together, get tied together, be praying, be compassionate, be loving, uh, uh, and and beginning to, to use our gifts and beginning to give God glory and give, give generously, give God glory generously uh, over and give praise over and over and over and over again. I believe God's going to set us in motion in a way that the gates of hell will not prevail against us, and we will just keep like a snowball rolling down a mountain. I was talking to the to the uh, team earlier. I already believe we're in the state of revival. I already believe it. And
And I, uh, how do I know this? Because every week, even in tuning in online, people have been getting saved. People have been getting set free. We've got people who want to get baptized. I believe you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is an immersion of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And you'll know. Uh, uh, we could talk about that. You'll know by the, the but there's the evidence of speaking in tongues. There's the evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit flowing into you. Some of you may experience Holy Spirit goosebumps even right now as I'm talking. But I believe that you will experience a power and the resurrection and the life that flows through you. And it's by God's grace. So as you've been, been watching, as you've been tuning in, some of you need to know, hey, you got to be prepared to move. God is doing something. And I want to challenge you. Some of you have felt encouraged. i got to get some friends here. they got to get what's going on here. they got to know that is the Holy Spirit working in you, and he will create divine appointments for you to begin to invite, to begin to pray for people, to begin to in intercede for people. And I believe we're going to see a massive move of God in our area like we've never seen before. I want to encourage you as you've been praying for revival. It's swelling and swelling and swelling and swelling and swelling. You in these moments. And so I believe in miracle signs and wonders. I believe in praying for the sick and they shall recover. I believe in laying on the hands and anointing people with oil. I believe that cancer still has to bow to the name of Jesus. I believe that addiction can fall off and break free. I believe that the, that fear that so easily entangles you can begin to be shaken off by your identity in Christ and who he is. I believe that God can strengthen you and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I believe he's anointed your steps for victory to begin to, to be an overcomer and not to be, to be laid out in a victim of the world and their circumstances. I believe that God's got a plan and purpose for your life and you can step into it. And I believe that your prayers are powerful and avail much because of the, the name of Jesus who with which who you pray. And so I want to encourage you in these moments. Hey, would you bow your head with me? And perhaps you're tuning in right now and you've never asked Jesus into your heart. Would you just bow your heads and make a sincere prayer, an authentic, a real prayer request in your heart. And sometimes, sometimes the realest prayer you can pray is just Jesus. Jesus help. And I want to challenge you if you're in that place, if you're suicidal, if you're alone, if you're, if you're just, if that's all the words you can get out, just say, Jesus help right now. He's going to come to your rescue. And I believe he'll, he'll see, he will see you through whatever circumstance you're in right now. If you've got a little more inside of you, I want you to begin to pray this prayer with me. Dear, dear Jesus, uh, will come into my life. I welcome you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and setting me free. I pray right now for that to manifest in my life. God, I thank you that you've given me a spiritual potential, and I pray by your Holy Spirit I can live that out. God, thank you not only for saving me in this moment, but for giving me eternal life and an abundant life. God, I help me to be faithful and a good steward with what you've given me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe that all of heaven is celebrating with you because Jesus writes your names in the Lamb's Book of Life and then signed, sealed, delivered. And I believe that he's, he's, he, he's coming for you again soon. And I, I believe that as God begins to prepare to take up the church uh, uh, soon, we're closer to the end than ever before, I believe that you'll be a part of that. Uh, and and if, if something were to happen for you, to you right now and you were to die, you can, you can be at peace that you'll be going to heaven. And God is meant for your life to do more than just exist. It's meant to be ministry. It's meant to represent him in these moments. So, hey, if you don't have a church that you're part of or a tribe, a church tribe you're connected with, we'd love for you to join us. You can uh, connect to us at info at restorechurch.net. You can um, comment to us. We'd love for you to join us, our tribe, whether you're in this area or you're online. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for your faithfulness, for the, of like, sharing, and commenting on our streams. Thank you for, the, uh, for your gifts and generosity. Look, we don't do this so we get rich. We do this so the kingdom of God is advanced and glorified. And, and it's incredible to watch as we've got faithful leaders who are praying and interceding of how we can multiply what God is doing on the earth and what God is doing through Restore Church. And Restore Church is all about seeing you right sided up. So you're not living, living on your backside trying to defend yourself from the world, but you are sitting in a place of authority. You're sitting in a place of righteousness. You're sitting in heavenly places like scripture says, and you are thriving in the life that God has for you. For filling the mission and call of God on your life. And so we want to help you uh, see that happening in your life. We believe in, uh, in you having an authentic and life-giving relationship with Jesus and helping you become fully mature 
followers of Christ. And if you want to join us in, in any further way, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing here. I want to bless you and I uh, hope you join us again next week. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for those tuning in right now. I pray as we prepare to come back in person that you begin to, to make a way where there seems to be no way that you multiply the ministry with what you're doing even online that God, those who have given their heart to you right now would begin to let us know we can come alongside them and encourage them and disciple them and begin to mentor them and those I pray for an increase of those who want to get baptized. Lord, I thank you as we celebrate what you're doing each and every week. God, we thank you that you are not bashful. You're not, you're not hidden. You're not quiet, but you're on the move. And we eagerly put our position, ourselves in a position to honor you, to glorify you, that you would, uh, that you would do many good things in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hey, thanks so much for tuning us today. God bless you. We'll see you again next week. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you want to get more connected here at Restore Church, don't forget to fill out the digital connection card by checking us out on our website at restorechurch.net and clicking the Get Connected tab. We love you and we bless you and we will see you again next week.